We're continuing with chapter 12 with lecture 3, and in lecture 3 we're going to take a little different view of the short-run aggregate supply curve. We're going to get something very similar to what we saw in the short-run aggregate supply curve with the sticky price model, but we're going to get it to it just a little bit different way. It's called the imperfect information model. So assumptions. All wages and prices are perfectly fixable. All markets um, clear. Each supplier produces one good, consumers may um, and consumes many goods. Each supplier knows the normal price of the goods she produces, but does not know the overall price level. And this is where the um, kind of the the difference lies. So we have flexible prices, but we don't know what the overall price level is. So if our price goes up, if our price for our, you know, little p for our firm goes up, well here's the thing. We don't know if it's because people like our goods, right? So that's supposed to be our heart, right? They like our goods. So let me try that one again. So if our price goes up, the little price for little p for the firm goes up. They don't know if they just people just love our goods or if big p price level went up. Right? We don't know which one it is. That's the issue. So, supply of each good depends on its relative price. The nominal price of a good delivered by the overall, um, divided by the overall price level. In other words, it's real price, you could say. Um, supplier does not know the price level at time, at the time she makes her production decisions. So, uses the expected value of price level. So suppose price rises, but the expectation does not. The supplier thinks her relative price has risen, right? See, we don't know which one it, which it is. So we just think, hey, people like our goods, so our price goes up. All right. When many producers think this way, Y will rise whenever price rises above the expected value, but only in the short run because you're only going to get fooled for a short while. Eventually you figure out what the price level is and decide, uh-uh, this isn't the right thing and you readjust based on your new expectation of price level. So, notice that when we have lots of words in intermediate macro and not a lot of formulas, part of the issue is that, well, the formulas get pretty nasty pretty quick in this model. So this is actually overall a pretty cool model and I think does help describe a lot of what's going on. I think actually both models together. I don't think, I have a hard time believing that all prices are perfectly flexible in the short run. But at the same time, I think probably prices are more flexible than the sticky price model might make you believe. And so, you know, it's not this, this either or hard choice. Maybe sometimes you have some prices that are a little more flexible than others. I mean sometimes it gets a little wibbly wobbly and what happens is this imperfect information model I think allows us to incorporate that little bit of wibbly wobbliness in there. And so probably the truth is somewhere in between. Uh, but notice because we don't do a lot of formulas usually that's just because the math gets really nasty really fast. So uh, We've got a brief introduction to the imperfect information model. So what are we going to do? Let's, let's take a look at, well, what happens? Both models imply that aggregate supply, um, that the relationship, sum, um, both models of aggregate supply imply the relationship summarized by short run aggregate supply curve and equation. So long run aggregate supply curve and a short run aggregate supply curve. So essentially both models imply something akin to that as far as what the short run aggregate supply curve will look like. First of all, it's upward sloping, right? Uh, second of all, it's output as a function of prices, and as prices go up, we produce more in the short run. All right, long run equilibrium is where the price level equals expected price level. Yeah, in both models, this is our long-run equilibrium condition. So at all points on this short-run aggregate supply curve where output is above potential, what's going on? Price is above expectations. All points where output is below potential, what's going on? Price is below our expected price level. Okay, so we have in this case long-run equilibrium where 
the actual price level equals the expected price level, and output equals what? The natural rate of output. So suppose we have a positive aggregate demand shock. Moves output above its natural rate and the price level people had expected. So boom, we have a positive aggregate demand shock. Okay, what happens? So we end up with a new short run, aggr uh, aggr no. <clears throat> short run equilibrium, higher price, higher output. Over time, though, our expectations of prices must rise. Why? Well, price level is higher. We see price level be higher. We're not going to keep this low expectation of price level. We're not going to keep our expectation of price level at price level 1 if we continue to see price level 2. Right? And so what happens? Short run aggregate supply curve shifts backwards because of this adjustment in our expected price. And what happens? We get a new equilibrium at a higher price level.